Hi guys, Emily Craven here from the Queensland Writers Centre. Today in this interview, we are talking to the lovely Charlotte Nash. Now, Charlotte is... Uh has a fantastic eclectic career. She has degrees in engineering and medicine and she is also a uh, technical writer as well but at the same time she is a wonderful writer of genre fiction. In particular she has written medical rural romances and uh, she's also a pretty mean speculative fiction uh, writer so thanks very much for joining us Charlotte. No problem at all. Now Charlotte has a wonderful workshop coming up uh, in the Science Week uh, pool of writers workshops that we've got started this year and it's about putting science into your fiction so basically it doesn't matter what sort of fiction it is or what sort of science we're going to be uh, or Charlotte will be covering uh, all of them in her workshop. Yes correct. <laughs> um, so I did have a couple of questions that I wanted to ask you today Charlotte. Um, and I was a bit curious, you know, isn't including science just for those big three genres, you know, science fiction and crime and, you know, those military technical thrillers? Uh, well, certainly um, those genres are probably the ones that people would think of first when you talk about putting science in fiction. Um, and there's certainly going to be more of an expectation for those genres to include and explore science. But science is really just about uh, the knowledge of how the world works. And um, that means that any world that you create, whether that's real world or imaginary, um, there's, can include it. And there's no reason why literary fiction, fantasy, romance, and all these other types of genres can't include science on some level um, or be based on scientific knowledge. And they may in fact be the richer for it. Um, Fantasy world building, for example, can be helped by thinking about the fantasy world in terms of um, scientific explanations. Uh, even in, if those things don't ultimately make it into the text, um, they can assist in the world building. And um, in other genres as well, I think that they add layers and richness that you might not otherwise have thought of. Yeah, um, it's it adds, I, I think, an internal logic from, from what I see. Whenever I read something, you know, I think to myself, oh, yeah, that sounds like it's got a theory behind it and I can accept that. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and you've hit on one of the major points that I would bring up and indeed will in the workshop, which is that um, the internal consistency and internal logic of um, science is probably the most important thing. Um, it's probably even more important than being, you know, factually correct, whatever that means, or, or as we currently understand the facts. Um, so that would probably be one of the big issues. Um, and often a reader will forgive things that are maybe inaccurate as long as they're consistently applied. I suppose that leads us into uh, my next question, which was, you know, what are the top three things to consider or do when putting science into your fiction? Yeah, well, I'd say the first one um, is to understand the expectations of your genre um, and the degree to which um, your reader will expect science to be explored in that genre. Um, obviously, if you're going to write a hard, hard science fiction novel, the reader is going to expect a very different sort of treatment um, of the, the science in the writing than they will if they're reading a, a softer romance or, um, or historical um, fiction. Um, so... And, and it depends as well uh, on the genre how much that science is going to be critical to the plot, um, whether it will actually produce turning points and, um, and constrain the way that the, the plot and world is set up, um, or whether it might just be something that colours in the background and, and adds depth to perhaps the characters or the situations that they're in. Um, but as we pointed out before, in either case, um, whether it's pivotal or whether it's uh, just adding that richness, um, the internal consistency is the key. Um, and as I said before, um, inaccuracies can be a problem if they're unjustified, um, but not playing by the rules that you've set is probably a bigger problem. And, uh, I mean, that's the reason why scientific theories in the past have, um, you know, made sense to or, or lasted for years and years and years is because they had they had a logic. They made sense in, in people's minds and then when it was proven wrong, that's when the... So it's the, it's the same sort of mind trick. Yeah, and it's, um, it's one of the, um, I suppose, the... the 
the great powers of science that uh, it should be flexible enough to recognise when its own theories are outdated. And, and I mean, that in itself can be um, a, a starting point for stories. Um, and uh, when you're writing historical fiction, you may have to take into account the, the fact that science, as we understand it, or the um, you know, so-called facts are just the way that we understand things at the moment. Um, so that whole area about genre expectations and how much you need to get into it, I'd say, is, is the first um, the first consideration. Uh, the second one, I would say, is that um, even though we're talking about science and um, you still need to make it count, and if it's been built into the story, we really have to see what the consequences are for the character, um, even if it's just at the line level. Now, if you're going to introduce a scientific concept or some kind of rationale behind um, an item that you bring into play, um, then we really need to see how the character reacts to learning that new information um, or how, how that information constrains the plot in some way. Um, otherwise, um, you know, including science is a little bit like window dressing. It sort of starts to um, have that problem that any research can have, which is you know, being added for the sake of the research. It was a cool detail that the author wanted to include, but it doesn't actually serve the story. And so even though we're talking about science specifically, um, I think that rule still applies as the second point. Um, and the third thing that I would say um, in terms of the top three things to consider when you put science in fiction is while um, many science ideas sound really cool at a structural level, um, so they sound like they'd be the great basis of a story or perhaps of an ending or a crisis point, um, actually getting them into the story um, can be tricky. So you still have to remember that um, a story is still just a sequence of scenes and the only way that you can represent those ideas is in scenes. So you have to think about how that scientific idea is going to be shown through the viewpoint of the character. So what are they going to see, hear, um, taste and touch and smell to bring that scientific idea to light um, and to life, sorry. And um, so in the workshop, we'll look at some of those techniques. And these are, of course, broader writing techniques. Uh, and they're things like um, who you're going to choose to be your character, um, and what foreshadowing are you going to do, and how are you going to build on the prior knowledge of your character and reader uh, in order to have that science make sense. And I suppose also how to avoid the info dump. Correct, yes. Um, as much of a problem for including science in fiction as um, any uh, information that we might want to dump onto the reader about the world. And um, it's, it's sort of the classical problem of the high fantasy writer, um, but of course it's something that happens in science fiction a lot as well. And we will address that in the workshop. Um, one of the ways that, um, that it can be done uh, is to Firstly, ensure that you have an engaging character so that's comment on the show or anything um, before information starts coming in for the reader. For some um, genres, the, the info dump um, done well can actually be a great enjoyment of the text. Um, so for hard science fiction, for example, uh, writers like Kim Stanley Robinson actually do it reasonably well. But they always have introduced us to a character that we care about with an interesting problem first. Yeah, that's a fantastic point. And uh, I think that um, those who are watching this interview need to know that, you know, you can apply science to anything because, as, as you said, your books are medical rural romance. Correct, yes. The, the novels that I write are um, what we call sort of uh, Australian rural um, literature or rural romances. Um, but usually the protagonist is a, is a doctor. And um, because my background is engineering and, and medicine, um, I've always had a, a deep love for um, the way that science gives you such an understanding of how the world works, or at least how we think the world works. And I think that it actually makes um, everything cooler um, than it does when you don't understand it. And uh, so I tend to find that those things sneak into uh, my writing. And in those um, rural medical romances, a lot of the science is what we would call applied science. So it's about how you, um, you represent the medical profession and the things that the medical profession do. Um, but of course, um, other uh, professions can be represented in, uh, in other types of stories. And um, I sort of draw some of my engineering background into um, my speculative fiction. So um, I did mechanical and space engineering. So I have a few things that are um, set in space 
and that draw on some of those um, scientific principles about you know, orbital mechanics and distances and even really simple things like that. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time out to do this for us, Charlotte. You're very welcome. Yeah.